Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to use the nuclear norm and low rank factorization to solve matrix completion. Consider the Netflix problem. Users of Netflix give ratings to its movies. Our goal is to build a recommendation system that will predict what rating a user would give to a movie that they haven't watched. Now we can arrange the data which we already have into a matrix M as follows. With the i jth entry being the rating user i would give to movie j. Most of the entries in this matrix will be missing because a user wouldn't have watched every movie. But the claim is this M must have a low rank. To see why this is true, let's try to predict what rating a user would give to a movie. To do this, we need to know what kind of movies the user likes and what kind of genres are present in that movie. We can model this using a set of genres which would describe the movies and the user's tastes. Associate a vector U with each user whose entries describe the user's tastes. Similarly, a vector V for each movie whose entries describe the genres present in the movie. To predict the rating, we just take the dot product. Now we can stack the u vectors and v vectors into matrices capital U and V and express our whole rating matrix M as u v transpose. Now the key point is that the number of features or genres R would be much lesser than the number of users or movies. This would mean that M has a low rank. Now let us mathematically formalize this problem. There exists some ground truth matrix M of order M cross M whose samples are available to us in matrix X. X can be represented as an element-wise multiplication of M and W, where W is a masking matrix of suitable order and does the job of placing zeros at the unknown values of M. Well, you see that we cannot reconstruct the matrix M right away. This requires some prior information. What we use is the information we just saw in the above slides, that is, the low rank of M. Our problem at hand is to find a matrix Z, which agrees with our samples X and is of minimum rank. Directly minimizing the rank is an NP-hard problem as the rank function of our matrix has various local minimas. Instead, we try to minimize its convex envelope. It turns out that the convex envelope of the rank is the nuclear norm, which is the sum of the singular values of x. Now, what is a convex envelope? If f of x is an objective function that we want to optimize, then g of x can be seen as the largest convex function less than f of x. Since g of x is convex, it offers a global minima and we can now say that minimizing g of x approximately minimizes f of x. We can also get some intuition for why minimizing the nuclear norm leads to low rank solutions by borrowing ideas from compressed sensor. First, we observe that the nuclear norm is equal to the L1 norm of the singular values because they are always positive. Now, from compressed sensing, we know that minimizing the L1 norm of a vector leads to sparse solutions. We can geometrically see this as expanding the L1 norm ball, which is pyramidal in shape, until it hits some constraint. The point of intersection would lie on the coordinate axis most of the time, and those points are sparse. A sparse set of singular values means that most of them are zero, so the matrix has low rank. We can geometrically see this for 2 cross 2 symmetric matrices, which are described by three numbers, by plotting the nuclear norm ball in those three dimensions. Turns out that the rank 1 solutions, which have sparse singular value vectors, lie on the sharp edges of the cylinder. We can then use the same argument we used for the pyramidal L1 norm ball over here as well. Finding out the nuclear norm requires us to find the SVD, which is inherently a slow operation. The minimization of nuclear norm involves iterative algorithms with SVD at each step, which consequently slows down the process even more. To tackle this problem, we introduce the concept of bilinear factorization. We can say that Z can be decomposed into a product of a tall and a fat matrix with orders M cross K and K cross N respectively, which will then force the rank of Z to be less than or equal to K. This concept can be used to make nuclear norm minimization simpler. Consider the initial problem that minimizes the nuclear norm as follows. Now consider another problem that minimizes the Frobenius norms of the fat and tall matrices L and R over K as well. Surprisingly, the two problems are equivalent. Now let us prove this. Consider singular value decomposition of Z as U into sigma into V transpose, where U and V are orthogonal matrices and sigma is a rectangular matrix with the singular values as entries of its principal diagonal. Without loss of generality, we can take only the first k columns of u and v and the first k cross k square section of sigma, where k is greater than or equal to the minimum possible rank. Let us set L is equal to u k square root sigma k, R is equal to v k square root sigma k, so that z is a product of a fat and a tall matrix. Considering the Frobenius norm of L can be represented as phrase of L transpose L, substituting the expression above, we get this. Since u k is an orthogonal matrix, UK transpose UK is an identity and the expression simplifies to trace of sigma K 
which is the sum of singular values, which is the nuclear norm of Z. We can argue along the similar lines for matrix R and this completes the proof. On the other hand, with bilinear factorization, we cannot force the constraint we had earlier. We can instead replace this constraint by minimizing an error term, which is the least square loss between the samples we had and the values predicted by our factorization. We can now frame the final optimization problem by adding a regularization parameter lambda to this error term. Note that lambda is the parameter that controls the trade-off between similarity of x and z and low rank of z. To solve this optimization problem, we formulate something called the augmented Lagrange. The augmented Lagrangian contains the original objective function plus a Lagrange multiplier y times the constraint equation. We have now formulated the Lagrangian and to this we augment it by adding a penalty term which is the Frobenius norm of the constraint. Note that rho here is a penalty factor. We have now reformulated the problem to have additional optimization variables but no more constraints. This objective is convex individually in L, R and Z and it can be solved in closed form independently by setting the derivative to zero. We can form an iterative procedure which involves alternating between the closed form solutions for L, R and Z and this algorithm would eventually converge to the global optimum. To analyze the effect of lambda on the solution, we implemented and ran the algorithm on a bunch of random 100 cross 100 matrices from which we had sampled only 5% of the entries. This is the graph we got between the rank of the reconstruction and the value of lambda used. Clearly, a higher value of lambda leads to lower rank solutions because more weightage is given to the nuclear norm. To see the algorithm in action, we can use images. Images are just a grid of pixels which can be represented as matrices whose entries are the intensities of the pixels. Consider this image of the MIT logo and its grayscale version. It has some sort of structure to it with bands of pixels having the same intensities. We would expect this sort of matrix to have a lower rank. To simulate the measurement procedure, we sampled only 5% of the pixels to get this image. Black pixels here denote the ones which we did not measure. When we run the algorithm, we get this. It turns out that the final reconstructed image had a rank of 5. We can use this algorithm on the incomplete rating matrix we had earlier to solve the Netflix problem. Specific details about the optimization algorithm can be found in these references. Thanks for watching.